minute if you're seeing this all uh, on the on the video as it were uh, it'll be back in a second or two uh but we will get stuck into uh what was discussed today in the french senate uh where ultimately the interior minister better thought of as the home secretary from a from a uk point of view and the sport minister uh, spoke at length uh presented at length uh, it was translated at length by dan austin uh, Gerald Darmian and Amelie Oudere uh, Castera, and do correct me, Dan, because I've got to go on five live in the morning to talk about this as well. <laughs> uh, so I will, I will take it from you. Um, sure. It was a staggering display, really. Uh, the, the, the bit of it that I could, I, I got dubbed was. I felt it was just constant obfuscation at that stage as you went on and, and stuck with it through the questions and translated for everyone. One of the things that just became crystal clear to me was these these were people who were flailing. Uh, Dominum was flailing and AOC, uh, she was just trying to say as little as possible. It was exactly what the situation could have done without. Yeah, um, it, was, it was absolutely horrible. Um, I had no idea what the format was going to be, to be honest. Uh, I'd asked various people um in like the french press and stuff what the uh what the format was going to be and no one seemed to really know i think these things that they that they did are quite rare i think um i think yeah. they don't be called in fairly exceptional circumstances and it, and it differs sometimes um it was absolutely exhausting and i'm sure that loads of people who watched it would have would have thought the same or even just follows on online um because from start to finish for i think it was just over three hours in the end it was just a constant stream of of nonsense of of pure lies and and not not just lies but but deeply deeply offensive ones and ones that also are, are demonstrably incorrect um they they kept uh bringing these 30 and forty thousand figures back up and stuff like that um which like i i wrote an article debunking yesterday an editorial that went on the front page of Liberation, one of the biggest newspapers in France, debunked. Loads of people on television news in France, when I've been having conversations with them, have debunked and believes them. And still, they've they've tied themselves in this this insane knot where everything that they're saying is is based on prejudices and cliches, and it's all stuff that the people to do with Liverpool Football Club have, have previously spent over 30 years fighting against. It's all the same things. It's ticketlessness. It's drunkenness. It's people arriving late. People trying to push gates. It's like they've taken... It's, it's like they've gone over what happened after the Hillsborough disaster and gone, should we just do that? And they won't have done that. But they're, they're just as stupid. The difference now is that every single one of us has got a piece of technology in our pocket at any given moment with time-stamped video and imagery evidence that shows that they're talking absolute nonsense. And it was quite clear um, throughout the questioning, because I know that I think France 24 that was doing it in English sort of started going back and forth when they were being asked questions yep. by the other, yeah. by the senators. There was, there was one really odd senator who was just trying to get trains privatised at one stage, which was very fucking weird. But everyone else, I believe there was 25, but I, I sort of stopped keeping count. So 24 of them... I would say didn't believe a thing um, and asked really paint and specific questions of both ministers, none of which were really answered. Um, the format was a bit rubbish for that. So they, they, they both spoke at length with speeches for about probably 30 minutes. Yep. Then afterwards, they would ask senators to ask questions and they'd do like 10 in a row and then ask the two ministers to respond. So obviously they're not going to answer all 10 questions. And each of those 10 questions was four minutes long. So they were never going to answer even just one four minute question. Um, so the format, I think, needs work, it's fair to say. Um, but what it meant was that, that they both sort of had different attitudes for the rest of it. So as you were saying, Damana was was all over the place, really, um, going wildly from one figure to the other. Um, like his, his, if, if you just went through the whole thing and watched it again, like he would have said different figures about the same thing a few different times because he just weren't, it, it didn't seem prepared, um, or at least able to maintain his composure. Um, whereas Uday Castara seemed to really not want to be there, first of all, but then would sort of lurch wildly back and forth between 
wanting to really over over compliment Liverpool as a football club and the supporters, and then say dreadful lies about them the next minute. So I'm not really sure what she's been thinking all day since she woke up, really. But but the conclusion was that these are two desperate liars, terrified that they're going to lose their jobs ahead of French elections that are taking place on the 12th and 19th of June, who are absolutely desperately trying to blame a mass of foreign people that they don't think have a voice in their parliament, in their Senate, in their society, um, in order to try and get away with it. And what it, what it it's up to everyone now, whether you were there or not, or whatever you are in the world, if it's not Liverpool, to, to continue to, to try to put pressure on them in, in whatever way is possible, because there's not a chance that they can be allowed to get away with it. The, Neil, every little bit, it felt like, kept just making it worse. So they kept getting further and further off what was already really, really unstable ground and moving into 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 worse and worse territory as it wore on. The only real thing where you're able to have, and the, the very strange thing about this is I, is I can't quite understand. There's little tells in there, and I want to go through them over a period of time uh, with all of us together, but I can't entirely understand at times why why they are doubling down in quite the way they are because there's there's a clear area where from the outset they can have sympathy in two ways if you want a, the kindest interpretation one there wasn't much time to do this and in comparison to normal two there was the train strike was on they're the two things where you're able to say well you know you've you've got you've got you've got a bit of a like to stand on there everything else it feels to me as though it almost sentence by sentence you felt the truth of the situation and also just the human decency of the interaction slip away every sentence one after the other yeah it was it was staggering i mean it, it, the big lies were staggering enough but there was there was they were peppered with little lies in in amongst big lie sentences there was little i mean i i, I lost count of the amount of times i just sort of said well that's not true i wasn't really a big issue you know in in the sense of the grand scheme but i think what the Personally, what I think they tried to do is they tried to do the Trump, the Trump sort of playbook of you know you just you double down, you say it. But I think what they've what they've quickly discovered, and Dan's absolutely right, you could see the you could see the crumbling of them in the in the questioning or or in the answers to the questioning that they realised that actually they don't have as much support as they they probably assumed they would get, and the back end the back end that they thought they were going to get from fellow politicians and from fellow senators and even from the French media and people, it isn't there. It's almost like they've sort of they've dug themselves into a into a hole that now what 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 are they gonna do? You know, I mean <laughs> it's that you know, the elections coming up and, 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 and things like that in, in, in France. They they are the news now. They 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 have become they have become the centre of this story, these two politicians and, and, and what they've what they've done. And it's it's through their own actions. Like you said, I mean, listen, if they'd have come out and said, Look, shit went wrong. And basically, we, we, we're going to pin it on the fact that we, we only had three months to organise, which, which is absolute rubbish, by the way. That they had they had enough time to organise Camilla Cabello to do a, a concert. They had enough time to, to wrap their stadium in UEFA brand, and they had enough time to get thousands of delegates over on first class travel and transport and all this thing. They had enough time to organise a Champions League final. Don't don't let that be be said that they didn't. But they could have they could have hidden behind that. They could have hidden behind the rail strike again. It's it's proven really that. It wasn't. It wasn't as as damaging as it should have been. Really, that 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 rail strike. So, I think I think they just these two have just got things so so horrendously wrong, and it's hard to see. It's hard to see where they go from here. These two. It feels. I'll come back to you, Dan. It feels the politicisation of this is ironically what's going to end up absolutely doing for them, because because they are so determined to evade the scrutiny because they are so determined to see that france that their bit of france doesn't put lay the blame at them for this that their bit of paris doesn't lay the blame at them for this is part of why they are making themselves increasingly ridiculous you know you you wrote a really good piece today for the metro saying that french public opinion is you know nine in ten people think these people are lying and should resign about it you know the the idea that currently this is in france and i think this is a really important thing for us to say as as people from liverpool this isn't about us versus the french it's not about us versus the parisians it's about us versus uefa and versus the french government and versus the french F football federation yes but those people seemingly are very much not france and 
the further, the bigger the hole these dig for themselves, the more front pages are going to be, for instance, like Pinocchio about them, uh, because mm. none of it stands up, none of it, you know, this idea of 30, 40,000 fake tickets that they keep trying to find a way back to over and over again, even when they then acknowledge it's only 2,500 from UEFA max, and then they say, but it's a huge number in the next breath, and then there's 40,000 people, but then where did they go? And then someone says, well, have you got the documentary evidence? And he says, well, I can get a chart. And then everyone else <laughs> is like, but we, they've got videos, you know, they've got loads of videos of things happening. Well, you can get a I can get a chart. I, all of this is just I think it is making them look like a laughing stock. I really do. And once once you are an absolute laughing stock, there is no way back. And they, 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 they there is something so utterly ridiculous. And it's important that we all remember this is not about the French. It's not about Parisians. It's about people with power who shouldn't have it. That's that's absolutely correct. Yes, um, it's not really a story like about us I, I need to explain that but like this the the, the reason that like th they're all talking about it all the time in the french press and stuff like that is because this this plays into all of the wider problems in their society that have been top line news for for a very long time um humans of football fans for the past year since they came back from the, the pandemic after after being allowed back in but also police brutality and state incompetence um for the past five years since uh the macron administration took over so that's not that's not to say that it's disrespectful of us but but i'm just trying to make clear that the, the reason they care about it to the extent that they do is because this is a continuation of a story rather than like a brand new story and in what is it 12 days time when they have the first round of those elections it it sort of not reaches its end by any means but it reaches a very bloody important point of the five years that they've been doing it for um so for them, they obviously are interested in the way that, that, that people in Liverpool have, have been, or Liverpool supporters rather, have been treated and everything like that. Um, but they've they've known since. So, so the day that the uh, Gerard Darmanin was was chosen by Macron and and the former Prime Minister John Castez to be the Minister of the Interior, which was May twenty twenty, there was a massive demonstration of of maybe thousands or certainly very very high hundreds of women who protested against his appointment um on the streets of paris people can look up why that may have been that they, that they did that um but my point is more that this is not a, a newly unpopular politician i think it's probably fair to say that this might be the most unpopular man in the whole of france or certainly the most unpopular politician in the whole of france um so so when I go on the television and tell them that he's a liar and that he's incompetent. It's not a surprise. So, so I'm going on on public service news outlets and saying that, and and no one tries to stop me or questions me. If you if you try to go on, you know, if a politician tries to go on the BBC and just openly call the prime minister a liar, it wouldn't happen. They, 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 you can't say it in the House of Commons even. Um, so that to me makes very clear that that they know they they know basically, and I think that. An awful lot of people in France would quite like this situation to lead with him not being in his position anymore. And in, in a way, that can feel a bit like you're being used for that. But I don't fucking mind. <laughs> um, because it means, first of all, that his role in what happens is recognised. And secondly, that a man who, in my opinion, is very, very dangerous to anybody that is in France at any given moment, whether they be French or not, is is no longer dangerous to them because he will no longer be in his role um so i think that idea of of cooperating with as many people and authorities and media outlets and stuff like that as we can who are on our side is very important because the the number of the number of sort of baddies here i think is actually fairly small um and it's it's worth concentrating upon them in order to try and get a positive outcome for for everyone concerned. The positive outcome, John, and why this is difficult today, and a lot of people, I was, I mean, Dan himself, as he was translating, uh, but a lot of people were, were were becoming increasingly angry as it was wearing on. And I'll, I'll circle back around to, to to aspects of that. But what I what I think it's worth sort of saying is what they're saying, John, goes so far away from so many of our people's lived experiences. That, it, that it's so it's so deeply contrary to our lived experiences, deeply contrary to experiences that were published almost as live at the time, experiences that were documented as live by journalists right the way across the, the football media spectrum and beyond. That's why I think it is 
it, it, it's insulting beyond belief for people, and I understand why it triggers such angry responses out of people because because that it's effectively people sat in 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 positions of power, authority in a room of authority, saying things that literally literally go contrary to lived experiences before the game in some instances during the game and a lot of what was ignored after the game uh, as well doesn't really come through in this but that's there as well this is it is difficult i think for people to process as they're having what was their really deeply unpleasant lived reality be artificially maneuvered with before their eyes yeah and i understand why it was it would have been difficult for so many people you know because as you say, you're living the experiences again. I noticed the couple of people said, you know, they were going to, I think Kelly Kate said, look, I'm going to stop sharing stuff now because I'm not sure this is actually, you know, sort of helping really. And so I get that. I get that, you know, I was, I, 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 we had a show, so I was sort of, I was, I was following Dan's Twitter basically. So I wasn't watching it live. And Everyone think, is John, don't worry. <laughs> and I think I, so, so maybe I've had a sort of a different reaction really, but you're still sort of incredulous by, by what you read. And, and you almost start to sort of doubt yourself, which is like what they want really, isn't it? Like you're being gaslighted, like you're like, well, hang on, do you know what I mean? And then you, and then you, you, you're going back to your memories and saying, no, that's not right. You're remembering the videos you've seen, the countless videos as upsetting as, some of them are to watch and some of them are horrific and, and remembering those faces and and when you're trying to when you're reading their description or hearing their description of of our own supporters and then you remembering the people who were actually there on the on the day <coughs> it's so different and that's why social media now is so important because in the past it was so easy to play into it, people's perceptions of what they, they use the word British a lot, didn't they? And that's not by accident. There's not by accident at all. They're not saying Liverpool fans. They're trying not to. They're saying like a British, but they're trying to play into. You know what them the, the football fans are like over there. You you saw the Euros. You saw that. You you've heard yeah. the stuff. What he's doing. I mean, they, they were they were clever in that regard. I don't think much of what they did was clever, but I think you know using the word English and British a lot isn't isn't by accident really. And so the so they're trying to play into that and they're trying to, you know. Go for the for the for the for the stereotypes and, and, and go for people's you know in the back of people's minds. Oh yeah, football fans they probably wear like that you know. But the problem they've got is there was all these videos and not just Liverpool fans behaving, but also a wide spectrum of society of Liverpool fans. You've got children looking frightened. You've got people from age six to to eighty in these crowds and and different you know races and sexes and everyone. And you just look at that and you, and no one could think. That's not just normal people who were behaving, who were being patient, who were who were desperate to either get out of the situation they're in or to go and watch the football team that they paid for. And so so that's what will be the comeuppance eventually, and, and that's what will do for them. And I think they sort of know that as well, really. And I think and I think that's what today it doesn't feel like it, but I think today is a positive, and I think today is almost the result. It's not the big result, but it's but it's the start. And I think you know, I saw a few people getting despondent saying that and going, oh, they're just allowed to lie. But I don't think they are because the, the fact that, you know, I mean, that, that might sort of disagree with me and feel free. But the fact that today even happened, I think, you know, is a positive. The fact that they've even called down there, you know, by, by the Senate and by these other people saying, you've got to answer to this. This isn't on. Because what you've said, what you've come out to said after the, the game and after and, and since then just isn't right. And so you need to come down there and explain where you're getting this shit from because it looks absolute nonsense. And so just the fact that today has happened, I think, is is a win. It's not the big win, but as I say, it is a win. The fact that, you know, that someone put in the comments here that Ian Byrne went on French telly and, and uh, streets after and, and they were saying everyone agrees with you. That 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 is a win. The fact that the papers tomorrow are all going to slaughter them, that is a win. The fact that you wait for a good be you know, panicking badly now and thinking, you know, how are we going to get out of this? How they'll probably the next step will be to distance themselves from them, by the way, and, and they'll start throwing each other under the bus and stuff. Absolutely. But, but even yeah. that, you know, is a win, do you know what I mean? Because at least that, that's the first step to exonerating us. And so we are making huge strides and we are winning this this battle because we've got the truth on our side and the truth is the most powerful thing. I, I, I think, sorry, that, um, that, that John's writing what he says about today in a sense being being a good thing because as i say none of none of the senators that were asking them questions believed them it was quite clear in the tone of voice and the body language and the fact that they were trying to interrupt them when they were talking horseshit that they don't believe them um so so 
it's important in my view to to keep them talking about it as much as possible because the more the talk, the more they talk about it the more they lie and if a politician is is lying on the television in the country then it's obviously a story it's very important that it doesn't like go quiet for a few days or something because then it could potentially be swept away so i would encourage people to constantly be talking about it as much as they possibly can whether it's just sort of publishing your own account of what happened on social media or something if anybody under any circumstances uh, um, from from a French news outlet or or an English news outlet that we can speak to um, gets in touch with you, then I would encourage you to do it if you feel able to do so, um, because the, the, the more people are able to explain what happened um, and the more we're able to talk about what, what has happened since, the longer it can stay in the news, because if it drops out of the news cycle, that maybe we're done for who knows i would i would hope not um but it makes it loads harder certainly so as soon as that as soon as that finished before and i was able to actually look at my phone properly i already had two more invitations to go on things because they've been lying on the television again yeah so we can keep them lying on the television we'll all get to do more stuff we'll get to talk about it more and then you end up at some sort i would hope of end goal yep no same with that i'm i'm doing five live tomorrow morning at 6 55 that's how quickly this stuff rolls around in the comments gray mcgarty um points out about this idea that ultimately if and this is why i think it is difficult for people and why they are angry and why it's hard to i agree with john neil but it's hard to sort of see what john's saying you know at the minute that this feels like it's progress and i completely understand why because in there great mcgarty says if we weren't calm in that situation we were putting especially before the game in that tight horrible space this was the only reason this wasn't a catastrophe what i find difficult when i'm listening to them is the very people that you are on mass slandering and we know that no one there can't be any legal action you can say what you want you can disparage a large group of people like liverpool supporters you know that's that we accept that but the people that they are slandering that they've chosen to slander are the reason the primary reason i think genuinely believe why that wasn't a hell of a lot worse than it was every all i've heard subsequently from people who were caught up in the worst of it was it was liverpool supporters calling for calm trying to get yeah. through it yeah, one hundred percent. And also, let's remember, it's 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 a body of supporters that are used to European away games and and European finals in particular. You know, I mean, I'm, I think back to some of my experiences. I, I remember a bit of a trouble in Eindhoven a while back. I think sort of two thousand six. I think it was like a bit of a crush outside. Of, I mean, Benfica this year. I think there was trouble, obviously outside. Yeah. outside Brian Meechel about it today. Yeah. Yeah, Sevilla. I think in twenty seventeen there was trouble. The worst. I, I remember, yeah. I remember Lille. Um, in 2010 you know so and these people have got experience that's so in a way it was almost there was almost a an unusual sense of calm i mean i i i, I sort of got the start of, of of the trouble you know what i mean I, I i remember thinking god in an hour's time this place is going to be you know struggling and i and, and this is six o'clock you know or just before six o'clock just three hours to kick off um but there was all there was no panic you know, or no real sense of sort of anything unusual. It was all it was just it was almost accepted strangely in a way. And I wonder I wondered if you've got a, a mass of supporters that aren't used to this kind of treatment and it's their big day out. You know, imagine at a, at a playoff final or a, or something like that or you know th things like that where it's it's their big day out. They're they're one in twenty five years or they're one in fifty years and and they're not used to it. I wonder what the reaction is like to that because you don't you don't know what's you know that this is. I, I put it in inverted commas that this is normal for for an away game, and obviously it turned out it wasn't normal. But for a, for a good while, it did feel like, oh well, we just go through this. You stand there for twenty minutes, you wait, and then you move ten yards, and then you stand there for twenty minutes, and you get pushed into this narrow thing. And in a minute, it'll all sort of ease up. But I mean, I, I was emotional on, on, on during the game on um, on Saturday. I was right at the back of the press box, so I didn't. I didn't see the ban. I mean, we have we, we have to talk about this. It wasn't. It isn't an issue today. We have to talk about UEFA's handling of it inside yep. the stadium. We have to talk about the fact that their first, their first act. Okay, the first act was to delay the kickoff. The second act was to justify it with a lie, and to justify it with a familiar lie and a lie that Liverpool fans have have had to fight for. Well, I'm still fighting now, to be perfectly honest. They've had to fight it for for a long time. They're still fighting it now. I, I didn't see it. I heard the boos from the, from inside the stadium, and, and then obviously saw other journalists. I, I, just the roof was down on the on the press box, so I couldn't see the big screen. And then you, I'm getting messages off people outside saying, "What's happening?" You know, like this is a, this is an absolute joke. And to, to sort of to bring those two together and see what 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 the governing body is saying and what the people outside are saying, it's it was absolutely staggering. And to be honest, it 
it's easy to say, isn't it? Oh, nothing surprises you with politicians. Nothing surprises you with UEFA. Nothing surprises you with the treatment of football fans. But this did, and this has, and this continues to. And today was, I mean, I thought today was like a brass eye or, or, or a, a, a Black Mirror sort of episode or something where you think, God, like this is this is sort of genius dark comedy that's going on here that people are sort of doing this kind of thing. It was it was that sort of brazen and, and disgusting. And I think Dan's spot on, to be honest. It, almost, we want to see them on telly again tomorrow to tie themselves up in more knots. We want to see them, we want to see them tweeting random madness again we, we want we need them sort of we don't want them ushered into a dark room and said oh sorry they're the, they're the problem because that gets the problem out of the public eye it's the the next phase on this there's a lot of people in the comments saying that dan looks very tired and he does so we're not going to keep him too long <laughs> uh, we're going to encourage him to go and go and go and get some rest but the next phase on this john you know of the many phases, <clears throat> it's interesting to see the club uh, put a statement out about um, mental health support for people today. Uh, actually, whilst that hearing was ongoing, I don't know if that was deliberate uh, or if it just became accidental, but it felt as though it was necessary for some people. I think that, in general, the club have been astonishingly robust, uh, very pleasingly robust about this. I feel like that's not going to stop. That's not going to go anywhere. The one you know, the one absolute sort of saving grace in this, and this is why I'm referring to Dan looking very, very tired, is that we've we, we very firmly got each other uh, around this one. That's that's been the sense from 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 day one, but also that the we has become a really, really big we, I feel. And I feel I, I, I don't want to be going into uh, specific interviews or specific questions, but I feel as though there's a real there's a real sense that broadly everyone who matters knows that what we're saying is right and what they're saying is wrong. And I think that this is this is important that that, that you, you've got to you've got to work at that. You don't you can lose that. You can lose that overnight, but you've got to work at that. And that within that as well, the, the club being as robust as they are and will continue to be, I am sure, is only going to help firstly keep this in the public eye and keep it and keep it as something that needs to be resolved. But also secondly, just make crystal clear to to any anyone who decided that they might want to take a contrary line that corporately Liverpool and civically Liverpool is not standing for any of this nonsense on this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing that needs to be remembered, though, with with, with Liverpool is that I know loads of people who work for Liverpool who were caught up in all this, do you know what I mean? And so it's Liverpool Football Club sticking up for their people in every guard, including their staff, including their players who had you know family members caught up in it and stuff like that. And so this wasn't just sort of, you know, a one end where some fans were at a one gate. It affected, you know, the 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 entire Liverpool section effectively, and as we've learned since, quite a bit of the Real Madrid section yep. as well. Although they tried to keep that quiet today as well, and so which was just incredible, by the way, that they tried yeah. to act as though there was no trouble at the Madrid end. There's yeah. all this documentary evidence of trouble at the Madrid end, and they're going the Madrid lot were absolutely fine. They mm -hmm. were the least of our worries. They were just cracking on. I just couldn't believe they were just openly saying that when you're thinking, well, I've seen, I've, I've now read the reports, I've seen the videos. Yeah, well, it was like it was like Neil was saying before. There was loads of like smaller lies intermittent with the with the big yeah. lies, and they were almost impossible and um, to keep in touch. Like, oh yeah, it was it was all fine after the game and stuff like that. They claimed, like, they claimed they claimed all the Madrid fans arrived by bus, which is just absolute nonsense. I mean, like, I, I actually <laughs> so I I actually lost. I arrived with those three of us arrived. I lost the two people I arrived with, Ian Doyle and Paul Gorse, because I was filming Madrid fans at the train station singing Hala Madrid. You know, so. That was one where you just go, well, that's that's a lie, just just non-stop. But Sorry, even the, I was going to say, even the lie to the fan park open at eleven. Like I couldn't even <laughs> see the reason for that lie. Like I didn't see the benefit <laughs> to it. It was like, oh, we'll just throw another one in because we're we're, we're in, you know we're <laughs> we're lying now. Um, so let's say let's say this. Um, let's say that the, I don't know. Yeah, club had toast for breakfast. You know what I mean? Like let's just like. Well, I didn't see the benefit to saying the fan park opened at eleven, and then there was I was like, well, well, is Dan put a picture of? Well, it, it is not open at ten past one. Do you know what I mean? It was just like I didn't, I didn't see the benefits of that. Anymore. I was prowling around back stage because I couldn't go on. Like yeah, literally, well, I am the I am the documentary evidence of the fact that it was not open. <laughs> it was not put, open until half past one. You guys put a video up of the first people coming in, didn't yeah. you? Like yeah. sort of running towards the stage with like sort of excited, you know, supporters. Uh, what was that? Half one. Yeah, half one. Yeah, let's do where we went on half one. Yeah, so so it's insane. But as I say, I think Liverpool have been great. I think Billy Hogan's been spot on. I wouldn't be surprised if he's if he's back on tonight, sort of talking. But it just keeps everyone together. It's a reminder that we are all together, and and that can be comforting to anyone who 
is maybe you know we're we're quite lucky in this situation. So the Anfield wrap, I feel like we you know we have sort of got each other. We're very tight in terms of our contributors and stuff. Obviously in work and stuff, and we've got us a big big support network. I'm conscious that not everyone maybe around the country or the world who was there has got that. So I imagine it's it's really comforting when your CEO comes on the telly and says, we're not having this, we're sticking together. This is what you can do. We want your testimonies, email them here. If you want any support, you're out there because it does make you feel like, right, you know, we're going to stand together on this and we're not helpless and, you know, we can't, you know, it can't feel like, well, what are we supposed to do? You know what I mean? What are we supposed to do about UEFA? What are we supposed to do about France? But you know, the French government or whatever, you know, what am I supposed to do sat in in my house just reliving these terrible moments? I can understand how that can be really, really difficult. So that's why the club have been brilliant. And I think in the past, over certain things that aren't as serious as this, they've gone, do we really want to take you away for on on this? And this time they just thought, fuck it. And there will be consequences, but they're almost not thinking about them unfairly. Nah, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, that, is the, that is the main one. There's... In, the, in in amongst all the lies, Dan, there's one immutable truth that sort of keeps coming round over and over again. I saw that uh, but Ben Johnson tweeted tweeted about it. Uh, you know, he said they pretty much told us what went wrong. They expected hooligans and policed for hooligans. The fact that hooligans didn't turn up is irrelevant. You're there standing in a crush. You're a hooligan to us. Zero humanity. So you can fuck off and cop for this. And that is... I think that is, you know, that that's what I, I, as they were talking over and over, just even the the overall tone of first and foremost, police need to control that this is about, this isn't about sort of ensuring that this event goes as smoothly as possible. It's about, it's about a form of dominance. The police in here is about a form of dominance, not about you getting out of the ground as smoothly as humanly possible. But I think that that, you know, what in amongst all the lies, that is, that is an immutable truth that they had decided and they have culturally decided within all the organization around this these are going to be the problem and so this is what we're going to have to do about these to ensure that they're not the problem and to me that is that is you know it's it's an ancient attitude but it's one that that perseveres all over the globe but it is it's a, it's almost the most truthful thing that they said all the way through if you know what i mean it's it's their default position um against certain groups of people um so some of them are striking workers um, so you heard of various points. Um, Gerald Damanan blame said striking workers for what happened, in part at least. Um, striking workers get battered by the police in France on a habitual, probably weekly basis. Um, protesters against institutional racism and things like that get battered in France by the police on a regular basis. Um, and this season, because there has been significant trouble inside football stadiums in France, um, but because they've gotten used to Kettling football fans and battering them, it's just their default position. Um, and when you add into the fact that it seems like since February, when they agreed to accept the match, they've operated on the basis where there'll probably be an English team in the final. They've also added that prejudice in as well. Um, so today, for example, when they were talking about um, specific things to do with Liverpool, so I'm... Uh, Amelie, I've forgotten a fucking name now, I'm so tired. Amelie Udaya. Um, Castero. Yeah, yeah. Um, when she was saying about like the specific risks that um, that Liverpool fans pose, I think if Manchester United were playing in that European Cup final, she'd have been saying exactly the same thing today in exactly the same Senate meeting. Um, or if Chelsea or whoever, I think they've got a national prejudice that has probably always existed but has built up because relations between the two countries have fallen to probably a, well, not an all-time low, but a, a modern history low um, in the past few years, um, that that has built up and up and up. And over the past few months, since since they got given the game in February, they've all riled each other up. Someone's gone into a meeting and gone, did you see the other day that they booed the national anthem? Or did you see the other day that there were fans on the pitch because it's apart? And that sort of thing. And they've all riled each other up with this idea in their heads that people are, are coming to, to cause violence when it's objectively incorrect and it never happened. Um, so it's 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 desperately important that that is, is shown to be false. They, they were asked loads of specific questions about um, the policing uh, memos, they were calling them, that they were given throughout the organisation process. So there was one specific senator that asked them, tell me who was in charge of this operation who knew about the operation and the strategy for the operation and how much did you know? As far as I'm aware, he, he, neither of them specifically answered that question. They gave kind of general answers where they where they vaguely referred to 
you know, we, we had more police for this than we had at the uh, Coupe de France final and stuff like that. But they never specifically said, this is the man that came up with it. This is These are the resources that said man used to build that strategy. These are the seven people or whatever that that strategy went through, got approved by, and was signed off. Um, so th- that that needs to be known as well. It was it was a very pain and question from whoever that senator was. I could not keep track of who they all were. Um, they also all really looked like the same middle-aged white fella um, <laughs> with grey and balding hair. Um, but it was a, it was a very good question, and he didn't get a proper answer. Um, and 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 the truth of this is that like. So they asked 25 questions today. Um, well, I mean, 25 people asked questions. They probably asked about 100 questions if you added them all up. But there are hundreds more. Like, like if, if the actual truth of what happened and why it happened and what, what should happen in the future were to ever be resolved from this, it, it should take months and months and months of, of pure transparency of, of independent officials looking over reams and reams of documents and email chains and whatever else um I, I hold precious little hope that that will ever happen but i think what is on our side is that is that public opinion is already um very very out of favor with these two ministers especially gerald Darmanin, um, and that can hopefully keep it in the news for long enough and and mean that maybe like the sort of very very finer detail of stuff like that actually ends up not being that important if that makes sense it can just do for them on the sheer principle of of absolutely everybody on the planet knowing that he's a bare-faced liar the i mean the bare-faced liars do continue there was the idea that if there hadn't been intervention there would have been a pitch invasion uh which it was it was, a, invasions. It, it was, like, it, it, it was like, a big cat on the back because there wasn't a pitch invasion yeah like, when have we ever gone on the pitch like for the european final i don't remember i can't remember ever seeing Liverpool. Please, fans, sorry on the pitch. It's like, no. but you were like a big well done for that. It was like, it was like saying, oh, you know, what nice one to no. fire a rocket at the moon. Yeah. You know there were, no, there were like... no, no sexual assaults either around around the outside of the, the stadium. Apparently, as well, that was that was another one, wasn't it? That they seemed very very pleased to but, to reveal. But what there was, what what, what <laughs> wasn't the, gone? The, the most the most shocking one for me was both of them repeatedly said there were no serious injuries. And I'd love to know what they define as a serious injury because it seems to me that a serious injury basically meant a death. Yeah. Um, because we've yeah. all seen photos of people slashed. We've all seen photos and videos of people with terrible cuts and bruises suffering from really, really, you know, offensive reactions to um, to tear gas. If that isn't a serious injury, then what on earth is? Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. The the pitch invasion part is just another one of those things that it feels as though it's being clung to from thin air, Neil. And I think that, you know, there's to go back to where to John's note of optimism earlier on, that this is to me, this is what people on the run sound like. And this is what people who are just slinging stuff at the wall and I take your, your Trump playbook thing and part of the reason my politicians do that is it does work. It doesn't always work, but it does work, you know, a, a lot of the time. But for me today, that was what people on the run look like sounded like people people who people who were just swirling around and just throwing stuff and throwing stuff and throwing stuff and hoping for the best and that's yeah. why i think keep, keep keep on keeping on right now is the is the way to do this because they are they are rattled yeah do you know what i, I during the game obviously there was a, a moment towards what soccer's time in the game where the, obviously the police gathered at the, at the end of the liverpool supporters and i actually took a video of it just to, to contrast because it was Steward, you know, high vis stewards at the Real Madrid end, and then riot police at the Liverpool end, and I, it 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 looked like a demonstration of sort of you know that we want this to be the image really that 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 defines this sort of situation. We want it to be that look what we had to do. We had to we had to get all these police out, and I had a brief moment of real sort of please please let's not have any sort of scenes here. And I think like we talk about Liverpool fans' behaviour. It, it was under the pool light. They left before the, the team had even come over to clap, and they left before the, the, the trophy was lifted. They they the the away end emptied with you know pretty pretty quickly for Liverpool. I think again without that, you know, if if that had prompted the reaction, what what would we be talking about now? You know, and, and that that to me shows the sort of attitude that they had. I, I sort of described. I wrote it in a piece that I did today with with Camelia from the um the French Liverpool supporters club. She said that it was described to her as it was like they were 
preparing for the 1980s that that was sort of that was what they were they were thinking of they were thinking of you know those scenes that we remember from 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 the mid 80s mid mid to mid to early 80s of England fans at tournaments and and Millwall fans and those kind of things and all all these sort of events that we all we all remember we all sort of we all associate with with that era it was like they were prepared for that and if the the yeah the pitch invasion lie was sort of just the one the one sort of the biggest straw that they they they, they plucked out of nowhere if you like but there were others there were there were others in there the, you know the rattling the gates the the getting under the gates the getting over the gates the you know i think there was a claim i think dan dan tweeted the claim that they they, they said that there were there were fans leaving during the first half there were fans mm-hmm. leaving leaving the stadium during the first half which what you know like seriously you know and the, the other thing about the pitch invasion is they, they, they didn't have to do well to stop all the ones who were going to invade the pitch and the half that they did let in were the ones who weren't going to you know they, they were never they, they were already in the stadium and didn't invade the pitch so what, where's this idea that, that the idea that all the ones at the back or the all the ones that were coming in at you know seven o'clock rather than six were going to do it it was it, it's, it was absurd it, it, the whole thing is absurd on what Neil's saying about all the people who were supposedly getting off during the first half, the very first question that a senator asked a pair of them was, "You've you, you've said all of this, you know, you keep throwing that forty thousand number around, and you keep saying that people were travelling, you know, in and out, and there was this massive, you know, group of forty thousand people over there. Why have you not shown us a photograph of them? Why have you not shown us a drone shot? Why have you not shown us an image from a helicopter? Why, in all of the videos and the photos uploaded by supporters, are they not there? Why have you not shown us any actual image-based proof of that? Um, and obviously, the question wasn't answered. And the question was go? Sorry? <laughs> and where did they all go? Where, where, where did they go? Oh, yeah. the That's the people. biggest question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, indeed. All right. Um, there's more and more and more on this. There will be more and more and more on this in, in lots of different ways from individual people. And a huge thank you. And I, it's been coming through in the comments repeatedly to Dan, who's very much gone onto their turf and done so magnificently uh, across the course of the week. Uh, really, really you know, for our corner, all of our corner, uh, with massive panache. Neil's wrote a couple of brilliant things today. I'm really pleased he mentioned an interview, Camille, from the supporters club who couldn't have made us more welcome over there as well. It is remembering that ultimately, I'll say it again, this is not about the French people. It is not about Parisians. It's very much about UEFA. Uh, it's very much about uh, people in Paris. Uh, it, sorry, in, 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 the, in the French government. Uh, and it is very much about the French Football Federation. It is not about the people. The people are none of our business other than to say to them, most of us had a really nice time in Paris until we got to a certain point. Uh, that is worth saying and worth remembering and going through all of that on. There'll be more on the Anfield wrap, you know, how we will continue to be part of this. Uh, because we're us, we're working very hard on Thursday and Friday. Afterwards on Friday, we're going to go for a pint in town. Um, and what I may well do is just sort of say where we're going uh, on Twitter. If people want to come down and have a chat. John's point before about people being somewhat separated is a really, really valid one. I think a lot of heads are quite kettled at the moment. So, you know, in a really informal way, if people want to knock around a little bit on Friday evening, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if we can put that out there and, and make that clear as to as, as to where we are. The stuff that's on the Liverpool website, do look at it, do take it seriously. Liverpool Football Club working with a, a number of expert mental health organisations. The club's uh, pledged financial assistance for those organisations still in demand. Also, all the forms, the Phil Scranton form and the form from Liverpool LFC do fill in. Uh, they needed to be completed by Sunday the 5th on the LFC one. Um, so do fill that form in if you can, if you can bring yourself to do it it can only help it cannot hurt uh, there's so much stuff on that lfc website for children and young people for adults as well so many places to get in touch with and as i say lfc are going to support those organizations right then um let's be clear about this um they uh the Darmanin's lies uh have made it clear that the approach of the french police was to treat lfc fans as problem fans it was wrong. We weren't problem fans, but by God, we're fucking problem fans now. See you later.